Bats do it. Bees do it. Even educated fleas do it. Let's do it. Let's do an episode on animal sex. Oh, God. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to How Come. This week's episode is wild. And by wild, I mean it's all about animal sex and how it's different from human stuff. Um, It is crazy. Trigger warning. There's like incest. Some animals are having sex with actually. Yeah. Trigger warning for incest, um, bestiality and R word. Um, But it's definitely not the main focus of the episode. But I, I do trigger warning. Um, it is super interesting. Um, and we are talking to Dr. Lisa Lipman, who is one of the most followed and socially influential veterinarians in the United States. She makes house calls to treat some of the most influential pets in the world. And she sits on the board of Animal Lighthouse Rescue, whose mission is to help homeless dogs of Puerto Rico. Um, she is also the co-host of a hugely popular podcast, Pets and Punchlines, with her partner, comedian Richie Redding, and she still finds time to devote to her own dog, the incomparable Rhodesian Ridgeback, Chloe. Richie is also on this episode. He's a stand-up comedian who has been seen on HBO and Prime Video. He's best known as, his words, the white guy who tours with Cat Williams, but my words, the white guy who's dating the coolest woman who treats Cat. Um, don't hurt me, Richie. No, he's really great. I've been on Pets and Punchlines. And yeah, well, this episode's been a long time in the making, but uh, feedback, welcome. Um, also, at the end of the episode, after the closing song, Robin and I say even more facts. And they're really weird. Most, like, most of this episode is just like weird animal sex facts. Like, did you know that slugs have dicks on their heads? They do. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, still trigger warning. But also, if you're loving it, there is even more on patreon.com slash how come. Thanks to Dipsy for supporting How Come. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories. If you're looking to heat things up, there's a story waiting for you. Get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash how come. Thanks to Buffy for supporting How Come. For $20 off your first purchase of $80 or more, visit Buffy.co and enter promo code HOWCOME in all caps. How come? How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just. Um, other recommendations I have for you are, uh, oh, there's a new Gossip Girl coming out. And I I watched like the first two seasons of the old Gossip Girl, but I didn't really like it because I was a huge fan of the books. And um, yeah, the books are all on audiobook. They're still very problematic. I don't know if I'm obsessed, but they're definitely better than the show. Oh, Last week, Irene recommended Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I started watching it. It's like it is good. There is longing and gentle touching, but it's in fucking French, man. And I don't speak French. And I'm so bad at reading subtitles um, because of attention issues. Like I really want to watch Parasite too, but I also already read the spoiler online and yeah, subtitles are tough. So it's been a slow burn, this lady on fire, but I am going to finish it. And yeah, those are all my recommendations for the week, I believe. We don't have a congratulations this week because I don't know, I didn't want to put anybody on the animal sex episode because like, I feel like if you guys hate it, like it's going to get taken down. Um, please write in. Let us know if you like it. Or, ooh, go talk about it on the Discord. We had such a fun Discord party the other day. Thank you to everybody who came. It was literally a blast. I out loud during it said, oh my God, I'm having so much fun. Um, yeah, go talk about it in the Discord, especially if you liked it. Or if you have like other animal facts that you want to share, plop that in episode discussions. 
Our Discord link, if you don't know, is in our bio. This Maybe this is too crazy of a warning, but no, I don't know. You'll know too much about animals after that. But aren't we? Anyway, enjoy. Welcome Richie Redding and Dr. Lisa Lippman. <laughs> <laughs> what an exciting crossover. We're pumped. Um, yeah, it's been a long time in the making. I've been like trying to do an animal sex episode and it's been a back and forth because people are like we are just not interested in that and i'm like well i am who's interested in that we offended yeah we come from animals you guys it's the same thing and like all those animalistic instincts come on can i can i propose that we dub this episode dogs don't deserve to come (laughs) (laughs) yeah and like I don't know. Why wouldn't you want to hear about a duck's corkscrew penis? Like, I want to learn about all of the things that make animal sex similar to us and very different to us. Go for it. So the first and most boring question in an animal sex episode, and you guys have probably been asked a ton of times, can you have sex with your pet in the room? Okay, that was, I was, I heard the period, can you have sex with your pet was... No! <laughs> um, in the room. The cutoff, right? <laughs> I'm in the room. Um, It's an important (laughs) last three words. Yeah. For sure you can. Yeah. And we do. You have a dog. Chloe, we're very proud of her. (laughs) She's not really just a dog. She's kind of like having another dude around, Richie always Mm. says. She's 73 pounds. She's Mm -hmm. not not small. She's really peen height, you know? So like... (laughs) Yeah. I feel like having external junk just changes the, the whole nature of being naked around a dog, especially if it's waist high. Um, mm. But Chloe was involved in our first sexual in- encounter. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> involved is a strong word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was holding the camera. She, she was there. <laughs> Yeah. She was there. No, like she was trying to get involved, and it was for like, sure. She wants to lick his peen all the time. Like, if it's that- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. same thing with my nipples, which is like actually so weird. I was gonna say you're not the only one with protruding body parts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but titties aren't like they're at- not face height. Yeah, it like you got to work for that. But she'll go like right for the nip. Um, so she was there. Yeah. Well, we were. I lived in a 400 square foot apartment. Right, and. Mm-hmm. It- it was uh, mouth stuff on the couch, and uh, <laughs> I, I guess I guess she hadn't had too many uncles over recently, and really <laughs> wanted in on that action. And it was a lot like I, I had to like make a pillow fort to like protect myself from because I mean she's not a small dog, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Ridgeback, like they're 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 the lore around them is that they're pretty fierce. So I was keen mm-hmm. aware of her presence. Even though you are famously twisted steel. 140 pounds of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so did you did you fight her off for your honor? Like, what do you do in that situation? Literal pillow fort. <laughs> Literal pillow fort. You just keep going. Basically. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> nothing was, nothing was going to really stop him, I think, at that point. <laughs> and like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like people always ask this question of like oh like is it weird like to masturbate in front of your pet like are they like thinking about like do they think that you're being defiled like if if there's eye contact it's weird (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, but you make it weird yeah uh, yeah. i mean they they lick puss right in front of us that's true grace is constantly going down on herself (laughs) as she should and then she tries to judge me when i do it when grace does it it's cleaning when you do it it's sin it's dirty yeah (laughs) yeah Totally. Also, shout out to Robin's sweatshirt today. That is a How Come original. It is cats on it, and it says, it's called a pussy because it cleans itself. Hey. (laughs) Iconic Um, for this week's episode. Ooh, hi. While I'm shamelessly plugging merch, just a reminder that you can only get merch if you have a PayPal account because, I don't know, something's wrong, but I have to fix it. Um, also, how, how are you guys liking the episode? Are you enjoying? Do you feel weird? Um, I'm sorry that I said that question was boring. Um, I, I just meant like every, they get it asked it on every podcast, but somebody in our discord did write, like, does anybody else feel weird? Like when their dog or cat is like looking at them masturbate and like, if you feel weird, just make it leave the room. But like, you shouldn't feel weird. Um, also 
I'm like moving back to New York for the summer or something. And um, I'm very upset to be leaving my sheets. I don't know. I'm, I'm packing light because I have to bring Grace. And I... I don't know if I have enough room for sheets, but I have, I'm going to have to make room because I'm so obsessed with these Buffy sheets, you guys. They make the coolest, coziest, softest, and best for the earth sheets ever. Um, they're super cooling. Temperature regulating fibers like eucalyptus and hemp mean that they sleep better quality all around. Like I sweat way less in them. Um, and they're just like so soft. They get creamier and dreamier with every wash, um, which... We have to wash our sheets a lot if you listen to this podcast. Um, and yeah, it's it's a marriage made in heaven. I love Buffy so much too because the best way to enjoy Buffy sheets is in the buff. And I'm, I'm a nude sleeper. Um, so pass on your PJs tonight and get ready for the best sleep of your life with your Buffy sheets. Also, I didn't know this, but did you know that sleeping naked is supported by science? Um, apparently it helps you sleep better, better sleep quality helps you fall asleep faster. Um, and I have been doing that on my Buffy sheets and I love them. Um, yeah, we got them a few weeks ago and ever since they arrived, fantastic. I chose blue ones and obviously they send you the whole set, which is like the fitted sheet, the top sheet, the twin, two, two pillowcases. Um, and I never use a top sheet. Um, but I do sometimes with Buffy because it's just like so cozy and I kind of like wrap it around me like a little toga. And yeah, I might just buy another set for the East Coast because there's no way that I'm going back to a sweaty sleep and like a house full of like my actual family. No way. LOL. Just kidding. I can't wait to see you guys. Um, Buffy also offers a free trial. They have free shipping and free returns. So like, why not just try it? Jammies off, jump in, try for seven nights. And if you're not in love with your new bedding, Buffy will take it back. So for $20 off your first purchase of $80 or more, visit Buffy.co and enter promo code HOWCOME. That is Buffy.co, promo code HOWCOME in all caps for $20 off. So good and creamy dream. Um thing you can do in a beautiful creamy dream bed listen to dipsy have a good time and have to probably wash your sheets again um i love dipsy you guys know it dipsy is amazing everybody needs an escape but those can be hard to come by right now enter dipsy let yourself get lost in a world where good things happen and where your pleasure is the only priority dipsy is an audio app full of short sexy stories designed to turn you on each Dipsy audio story features characters that feel like real people and immersive scenarios, so you feel like you're right there. They release new content every week, so there's always more to explore. No matter who you are, what you're into, and what turns you on, they've got you. I love Dipsy, and uh, I, I usually listen to the soundscapes to go to sleep, or I'll listen to stories of, you know, like threesomes and stuff I want to do, or guided masturbation. Um, I think I'm going to be needing Dipsy a little more because sometimes it's just to like keep me company. And like I've been with Ben, so I don't often need company, but we, he's going to be going doing comedy and I'm going to be going and we're going to be separate for a little bit. And I mean, but like to, but to still dating, but yeah, I'm going to need more company and I can't wait for Dipsy to be that company. Also, I'm going to be sleeping alone, so I'm going to need their soundscapes even more to go to sleep. Um, and yay, I can't, I'm so happy that I have you, Dipsy. Uh, and for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash howcome. That is 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash howcome. Check it out. Um, and yeah. Get on that Discord and let us know if you like this episode or DM How Come Podcast on Instagram and follow us and rate and review and subscribe. I know I haven't asked you guys to do that in a really long time, but like, do it. We got some really nice reviews last week. Somebody said the sex podcast that this country needs. Thank you, Maddie. Dee, 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 dee. Um, and someone else said... Someone whose name is I Am Nobody said, changed my life. This podcast has been amazing and helped me through many a tough time since the beginning. I've brought it up to so many friends and everyone should try it out. 
Thank you. Um, yeah. Great reviews. Oh, we did get one review where a guy was like, can you speak louder and talk slower? Um, I probably can't. But you can increase the volume and also, um, what do you call it? Change the speed. Robin listens to this podcast at twice the speed. Otherwise, she doesn't like retain it. So you can listen to it at like half speed. Um, and yeah, just fiddle with the volume. Because sometimes if I'm whispering, it's because I live with fucking Ray and Jane. And I wanted them to hear me. Um, but yeah, when I go back east, I will try and speak louder. But also, yeah, volume. Shout out to Alex Peshera from season one, episode three, who still masters every single episode for you guys to be nice and loud. Um, okay, let's get back to this episode. Woohoo! Everything we do comes from animals, like especially sex wise. I am feeling personally attacked by people who did not want. Totally. Like, okay, so we made this list of first animals that have sex like us. And then there's a bunch of animals that are just so very, very different, but, um, so very, so very, very different, like slugs with dicks on their heads and animals that have to like get pregnant through their clits. Like what? (laughs) So the other animals who have sex for pleasure and the horniest ones that we know of are the bonobos. Bonobos. Yeah. Yeah. They are primate. They're like a little too horny. Like they fuck their families. I mean, dogs will do that too. I think a lot of species will do that. Um, they just like, they don't really know who's their brother or their sister or their mother. Well, I can I can comment on this as well. Yeah. I, I've done much more uh, animal sex research than any person should. Uh, <laughs> no boss, interestingly, they are the horniest species, but they're also the most docile they have the least violence and infighting amongst them as Mm. opposed to chimpanzees who are far less horny and much more territorial bonobos have they do they're they're known for for doing gay stuff also they like each other off with their silly little monkey hands but (laughs) but also they jack each other off (laughs) yeah but it's like they they do it left-handed like it's half-hearted you know uh but wait was that the meme you sent me the one like this? I don't know what the... That was just monkeys just playing around. Okay. <laughs> There's just a bunch of monkeys jacking each other off. We love to see it. But, Happy pride. Every time. But uh, but the the women so like if there's uh if there's like male violence is about to happen sometimes a female bonobo will just come over and put her ass in the air and they're like ah let's fuck her instead and like, <laughs> it works shockingly well she comes in peace Mm-hmm. Hey, <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, yeah, no, that's what I've heard is that they like, they get along. They're not having sex to conceive. Like they're doing it because they enjoy it or to like stop a war. She's like little Helen of Troy in reverse. <laughs> they're on the rhythm method. <laughs> mm-hmm. Female lions apparently also have sex for pleasure, which we love to hear. A female lion may mate a hundred times per day over a period of about a week. And with multiple partners each time she ovulates. What? Well, cats in general, and I don't know about lions, but cats are what are called induced ovulators, meaning like they will just, they will ovulate when they are induced to. So when they are sex. When they have sex. Yeah. So a litter can have multiple fathers, a litter of dogs. or What? (laughs) This is definitely one of the most fun facts that I know. They can have multiple fathers. So probably the same thing is happening with lions potentially, probably, I mean, their cats are similar, very, I would assume they're probably induced ovulators and probably, yeah, they can have one litter can have multiple fathers because they will ovulate multiple times. If they have, if they do it with a male in that time period, they will get, and then they're unreal. This would be an amazing episode of Maury. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You're the father. You're also the father and you as well. (laughs) That's a bitch though. That like sex causes them to ovulate so like you can't even play it safe and like mm. no time of the month where it's like all right we've got this 10 day window right. to bang it out right just the d in the v is gonna <laughs> make an egg come down that's hell well wait speaking of eggs robin just told me this apparently there are some chickens that if uh if a rooster rapes a chicken a chicken can push out 90 percent of the seed so that she will not mate with that rap- and might find a better partner. 
Yeah, I had like a five minute long bit about this on my first album. <laughs> really? <laughs> you guys are perfect together. <laughs> it would be really nice for humans to not have to have babies of people that did that to them. Right. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about bonobos being a little bit gay. Do you remember the gay penguins at the Central Park Zoo? Mm-mm. So it was like, I feel like it was in like 2000s or something. Like I was like 11. Uh but there were these two penguins at the Central Park Zoo who were in a relationship and there were two guys and um, they took a pebble or like a stone and were trying to like raise it like an egg together. <laughs> yeah. And the zookeepers like acknowledged this and then they were like, there was like an egg that like the parent had died. So they were like, we're going to give this egg to the gay couple and they like raised it together and it was like front page news for the New York times. And I remember being like, Oh my God, people are allowed to be gay because penguins are gay. (laughs) (laughs) And it ended up that they broke up because you know, gay people can also get divorced. (laughs) Wait, did they really break up? They did. (laughs) (laughs) That's the realest couple. Yeah. Lobsters are monogamous. Forever, right? Mm-hmm. That's not just a Friends episode. No, oh, I think it's true. I, I was on the rowing team in, in, in college at Penn. Ooh. Everybody loved our two gay ducks. We had two mallards that were clearly way into each other. Aww. After a practice where we like really fucked up before a race, our coach was like uh, uncharacteristically chewing us out. He was like, the nice guy coach and like five feet away these two mallards just started pounding it out in the water (laughs) (laughs) it's so impossible to keep a straight face while they're just getting it in but like also how does a gay duck have sex because like anal is already kind of like a to-do like and then factor in like a corkscrew shaped penis yeah i don't and they're cloacas yeah it's just one hole yeah it's all one it's one hole for them they have one hole that's a butthole and uh penis they all have cloacas cloacas are what they pee and poop out of and then the the, the ducks also have i guess the penis so the peenies just for jizzing yeah (laughs) (laughs) that makes sound bite of my dreams so the peenies just for jizzing that's (laughs) (laughs) yeah well i mean i you couldn't like get that whole that corkscrew apparatus out every time you wanted to take a leak, right? Yeah, I think it's just I think the peenies just for just <laughs> they, have, they all have cloacas because that's why bird poop looks like that because it looks like poop and pee all mixed together if you look at it and it's like so sort wintry of mix, mm, slushy pee and poop together. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah good man. to know. Reptiles also have cloacas and reptiles have hemipenes. I just like the word hemipenes. They're like two little peens on each side of like the reptiles, like on their sides. So you have to they look. They have penises on their sides? Like pull them out. Yeah. They're like kind of, they're like back by their tails, like on the, on each. On the side. underside. Sort of on like the bottom Babe. side. Like, yeah. Sorry. Go. Sort of like <laughs> the bottom side. We're, we're going to have to to Google to show you, but they're called hemipenes. And I just Wait, really like Are they like called hemipenises or hemipenes? Hemipenes. They actually. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let, me, let me let me a hemi peen is the cutest word for a little genital right, is that right? a hemi it's peen? Just a hemi peen <laughs> the, the, one of the most striking animal penises out there is a uh, a tortoise I mean, did you I haven't up? seen that uh-uh oh my god so, it is an alien okay so here's if you type in hemipen, hemipenis comes up, but what the two of them are called hemipenes. And ah. <laughs> hemipenes is a pair of intermittent organs of male squamates. Hemipenes are inverted within the body and everted for reproduction via erectile tissue, much like the human penis. See? Uh, they come in a variety of shapes depending on species with ornamentation such as spines and hooks. Oh, who doesn't like a little... They have two. So why do they have two? Two is better than one. (laughs) (laughs) More chances. Snakes and lizards have not just one, but two penises called hemipenes. University of Sydney researcher says having two may benefit males during mating. Okay, that's it. Two is better than one. Another thing in the animal kingdom that I did not expect to see in our research was oral sex. 
Oh, yeah. Mm. Did you know that they do that? I mean, besides cats eating themselves out, but like... <laughs> For fun? I don't know. I guess I would assume any of the species, which are not a lot, by the way, um, that do it for fun. And then dolphins. Dolphins are the only ones that I, other ones that I know of that do it for fun. They get it in. But, but who has oral sex? Yeah, I don't know if this necessarily is for fun, but um, where is this thing with the bats? Do they 69 while they're hanging upside down? That'd be rad. Mm-hmm. Rob, where is this oral thing? Sex is also well known among short-nosed fruit bats for whom it is thought to prolong copulation, thereby increasing the likelihood of fertilization. Wait, Robin, you've been English this whole time? Yeah, I just <laughs> same. We just had the same thing. It's like, wait, she hasn't spoken I yet. I just feel like we should know this up front. I don't know. Being English? She's no, Kiwi. I've been New Zealand. Oh. Right. Sorry. <laughs> you, we're all English. We all we're all speaking it. <laughs> so fruit bats, they they orally copulate to to, to, to prolong, prolong copulation, which increases chances of fertilization. Fertilization, which is so interesting, because like they like use foreplay to like maybe have a baby. Is it foreplay or like take a break? And like go downtown and then come back. Yeah. Either way, they're doing it. They're doing it right. And, and we have things to learn from them. So that's just. What well, and it's it's so interesting though. That like, is that an instinctive behavior or a learned behavior? Well, what do you, I mean? Who like, would they be learning it from? <laughs> like from seeing do they see other do it? Do they talk about it at the fruit bat cafeteria? Like, how do they? Yeah. There's this one fruit bat podcaster, and she just highly recommends it. <laughs> Oral sex also occurs with some frequency with female cheetahs and lions uh, who lick and rub the male's genitals as a part of a courtship ritual. Holy shit, that is hot and terrifying. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, no, I'm just a lion licking your balls. Like you always see these courtship rituals of like beautiful male birds like dancing and like shaking their asses or whatever. But no one's talking about like cheetahs and lions literally blowing guys for attention. (laughs) (laughs) A hundred times a day. (laughs) Yeah. And she sucked off the whole Rick and Safari. What else did we have? Oh, this is just a specific study. Over the course of six years, researchers amassed 116 hours of behavioral observations, which included 28 acts of oral sex between two bears. I want to know whose job this is. I mean, why didn't I go that way? Do you really want to do that, though? Do you want to, like, sit in the woods and, like, watch bears go down on each other? Now I do. If I could do it all again, I would. Girl who set up her business so that she can go into penthouses and take care of Mariah Carey's pets instead of... (laughs) That's right. That's exactly right. I'm gonna watch Smokey the Bear eat that's, some ass. That's exactly right. <laughs> and then would... smoke a cigarette. <laughs> Smokey, no. Yeah. And that's how fires get started. One, uh, if I could throw one out there, you had mentioned yes, peacocks, like you know, doing their dance, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, I was talking about Bird of Paradise, but yes, peacocks also okay. beautiful. I just I, I went straight there, that. so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a friend that worked on a ranch in college. This is uncorroborated, but he swears that this is true. Is that um, peacocks have like an extremely low sperm count, so it's really hard to artificially inseminate. Mm-hmm. Or, or, I'm sorry, it's it's hard to like naturally inseminate them. And on top of that, they only get sexually excited if they like see it, like that that ritual that they have, like the dance mm-hmm. that. They- really important for like getting the the male ready for sex also mm-hmm. so the solution is that some poor bastard puts on a peacock suit and dances <laughs> around in front of it and he's <laughs> a a rubber friggin peacock puss with a plastic bag in it and he has to back that ass up so that- <laughs> <laughs> fuck a peacock if that's uh, oh the ultimate song. He's yeah. a peacock fluffer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lisa, you should have gone that way. That sounds fun. No. <laughs> well, I feel like these are just all new career directions for me. So I really appreciate this. Mm-hmm. Do you remember anything about panda sex? Um, we had they're just wildly not horny. 
Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> they're asexual. Yeah, that's why it's so hard to get them to have babies. Well, that's why they're so endangered. Or yeah. they're demisexual. They're like, I really need like a connection. Uh, yeah, it's like Actually, that. Actually, it is. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It, it's like they have, they're only into like a really specific type. And mm-hmm. there's so few of them that the odds of that being your type are just like slim to none. Ah. Oh. It's like heartbreaking, but awesome. Like, go off, pandas. Have high standards. There's <laughs> not many fish in the sea. You <laughs> might get extinct, but like, right. at least you never like settled. Yeah, you're doing it with grace. <laughs> <laughs> extinct on your terms. Right, right. You're extinct on your terms. Yeah, exactly. Are peacocks like going extinct? No. No, they're good. Yes. Yeah, so- okay. So that's just that guy's job for fun. If you're because if you're a breeder and you're trying to get like okay. babies per load and they don't bust that many, then okay, you can spread it around and you can you can take it and literally take that jizz into your own hands. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> in all of the history of you being a vet, has anybody ever taken their animal in for like a sex related injury or something? We see priapism a lot, which is like Dino boner. Yeah, hard ons that just last for way too long. Um, and they're on dogs yeah. or cats. Yeah. They can get like their penis basically prolapses out of their prepuce, like that sheath of skin that surrounds it. And oh. if we don't put it back in. So just like vet tip, if that happens, make sure to lube put lube on it to like keep it moist until you can get it back in or try to put lube on it and get the <laughs> it happens it's pretty common it happens to a lot of boy dogs actually that have like a lot of hair because like hair gets like you get like a ring of hair like stuck around it and then they get uh-huh. swollen and they'll like prolapse so yeah that for sure happens um wait is pri- priapism literally what happens to like that's like when they do take viagra and they tell you if you exactly like sex um four hour actors sex actors adult film actors <laughs> Right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> sex, sex actors. Uh, um, that's crazy. After yeah, you have an erection lasting for too long, it's bad news. Bears. It's, but and it's not because they're turned on by their owner. It's because of hair, probably from some issue. Right? It's not. Yeah. Don't make it about not you not if you're out over. there with a dog with a- <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. It's not because you're that sexy. Right. <laughs> right unfortunately. Right. Though I used to have a rabbit, like a little. Oh boy actual bunny rabbit his name is Poodaboo. he was he was a big black bunny and he was so cute and then he had this red boner that would flop out all the time whenever he was in bed with me and i was like you're not allowed to sleep with me anymore like you're horny the red rocket yeah how, the lipstick how big is a, a rabbit boner like it was like an inch and it was slimy looking right that's they, they are right slimy looking dogs too because and that's where like they really can't be dried out so if that's the case you gotta because like when they dry out oof, it's hard to come back from oh and then it like cracks yeah bad just it's poor little peener yeah. there are lots of vet stories where um we do foreign body surgery like when an animal eats something that it shouldn't and we mm-hmm. surgery, and we always give them back to the people because we're like oh you spent like ten thousand dollars on this here you want to see what your pet ingested and um, one this of my surgeon great. friends gave a pair of panties back to an owner with <gasps> right there. And she was like, these aren't mine. <gasps> that, is <how>. wow. Wow. <laughs> that is how she found out that he was cheating on her. <laughs> with a woman with better tasting discharge. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be offended. I'd be like, I leave my panties everywhere for you. <laughs> But (laughs) the x-rays. Right, right, right. Yeah, we've seen and we've had a bunch of dogs who swallow dildos. Shut up. And then people make up like all kinds of amazing stories. This lady brought in her dog and they had like it ate something. She wasn't sure what it was. And they got x-rays of it. And it's a bunch of doctors standing around and it's like something that looks like a rocket. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, I don't know what that could be. (laughs) And, uh, and then, and so they had to go in, do surgery for like five or six grand to get it out. And they always, the, the practice is to always return the item to the owner. So they come out with a vibrator and this lady is like, oh yeah, I was at a bachelorette party, but it was like a Wednesday. (laughs) 
<laughs> like old, old woman who just frequents bachelorette parties with her dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We so go together. Reason. She's a service animal. <laughs> she services me. Actually, while we're there, sorry, sorry. But while we're there, um, please don't do that to your animals. I know that there's like a lot of, we've seen that in some pop culture things of people putting peanut butter on their gens or letting their animals go down on them. Like, I, I thought you were going to say for a second, like, don't make them a service animal if they're really not. <laughs> but oh, oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make them fuck you. Don't make them do stuff to you. Because like, even if even if you're like, it smells my crotch, like when I enter the house or whatever, like animals legit can't give consent. Like we can't speak to them. It's not so. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I mean, you've you've really just gone down a path in life, too that like no, that's just, there, no, there's no that's coming just, back no. from yeah like what movie was it in like uh america's sweethearts do you remember that movie with john cusack and Catherine zeta jones and no I got nothing. julia roberts and then billy crystal was like john cusack's agent and like the dog kept trying to go down on him and like he was just like oh oh okay oh. or whatever and then it like becomes kind of like okay well i'll just let it and it's like no i don't even think that should be a joke anymore it's like weird it's totally weird and not okay yeah mm -mm. go find a person yeah like any person like you could pay people or not either whatever yeah yeah like that's better hunter s thompson in his book uh better than sex about being on the campaign trail from for uh, for bill clinton's first presidential run he swears that he got a letter from somebody that knew Bill growing up in Arkansas and that, that basically they could like prove from other significant things that he knew Bill Clinton as a kid and mm -hmm. his first sexual encounter was with a sheep. Oh. <gasps> According to the letter, uh, the the sheep was tied to a stump. It was <gasps> not consensual. But also there's a pattern there. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's not like don't stuff. Could you imagine if what it took for somebody to stop tying sheep up and fucking them was that they listened to this podcast? Mm -hmm. Just right place, right time. Like we have a person that needed uh, to hear this message. If you have somebody who needs to hear this message, just be like, hey, maybe listen uh -huh. to this episode and they'll be tricked because they'll be like animal sex episode. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you and were they'll find out it's wrong to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is about animals having sex with each other, not you. Right. <laughs> I have been doing <laughs> But yeah, I like I think that that episode of Black Mirror, do you remember that one where the guy had the politician had to fuck the sheep? No, the pig. I mean the pig. Yeah. yeah. Cuz I started to say, yeah, we do remember that one. I was that so was disappointed. I, well, I was so disappointed for episode two that it wasn't going to be 12 episodes about that exact <laughs> storyline. I was like, I'm here for it. 12 more I don't hours? Think, I don't think we got past that episode. That show was not for me. That episode's like the worst. It's just the worst. It's just bad. It was just like, why? Ugh. I'm not why. Why? Like, there, there's no like futuristic stuff. It's not very like existential. It's just like, would you fuck a pig? And it's like, not for me. Why? Why is that the moral of the story? <laughs> Not for me. Mm -mm. Now let's get back to animals fucking each other. Um, they also have very different reproductive systems. When elephants have sex, apparently the penis never touches the vagina uh, because the reproductive what? tract is like so long. Apparently the um, female uh, reproductive tract is nearly 10 feet from start to finish. Um, the vagina doesn't begin until about 4.27 feet in and a standard male oh. elephant penis can be more than three feet long, but it very rarely enters the vagina of an, a, a female elephant That's in hilarious. the tract. That is hilarious that you can have a yard of dick and it's still not enough to get <laughs> You still don't have enough hose on you. They have two hoses. 
and it's still not enough. Right. <laughs> they do also have the prehensile penis so that there's like there's pictures of like elephants using their penis to help them like balance so that they can get like grab stuff. Yeah, grab something up real high. That's amazing. It can move independent of their body. So is there gravity involved in this long ass reproductive tract? It must like Yeah, like does the tract That's strong swimmers? Yeah, they've evolved to produce um, smaller sperm, but a higher quantity so that they can combat the risk of dilution while the sperm's going. So it like geysers the sperm? Like are they laying down when animals are having sex or elephants? I didn't actually research a video of elephant sex, but I (laughs) figured that out. Yeah, I feel like the swimmer explanation isn't enough because it's not like just takes off after it. Like once it's done shooting, yeah, it doesn't start like flying around. When it swims. They're mo- they are they've got swimmer. They are actually swimming. They've got s- s- swimmers. Elephant sex lasts up for up to two minutes, and afterwards he will stay near the female and guard her from other males. Two minutes, not bad, buddy. Elephants may stroke each other with their trunks before the male mounts the female from behind, standing almost vertically as they mate. So then how does the... Okay. And then I think they're pregnant for like, how long are they pregnant for? A very long time. 24 months, I think. I was going to say about two years. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. I think we talked about this on a uh, with Esther Steinberg because she was saying that elephants have just like a longer gestational period than humans and like most mammals do, but it's because then the kid flops out and it's ready for the world. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right. uh, dogs are pregnant for about 63 days on average though. So yeah, what? That's why overpopulation is such a thing because... If they're only pregnant for 63 days, or they can get pregnant twice a year for six for 63 days at a time. And then they can have like 12 in a litter, let's say even average six is in a litter. And then each six has like, you know, their own litters and then they go out and reproduce. You've got, it comes to like 67,000 animals in like six years or seven years or something like that. So, oh my God, by overpopulation, such a thing. But yes, yeah, so dogs are only pregnant for 63 days. How do you grow a whole dog in 63 days? Well, they're, they come out like gum though. They're tiny. <laughs> yeah. They come out like little pinky mice. Yeah. <laughs> but my favorite thing that you ever taught me is about nipples. Yes. The number of nipples that an animal has is directly related to the amount of offspring that it can produce or vice versa. <laughs> Yeah, so so scientific. So like so for example, you most animals have like <clears throat> one more nipple than they can have babies to be safe, right? In case so like we have one baby, we've got two nips. Uh-huh. Right? But it's good to have more than one nipple because you want to switch because also nips get sore. Uh horses typically have two nipples. And uh, they only baby. have one baby. For a horse to have twins is very rare. But dogs, on the other hand, again, they have like six to six to ten in a litter. Dogs have ten nipples. So cool. And they have eight to 10 nipples and they'll have multiple in a litter. So I bet elephants have two nips. Let's look. How many How many nipples do elephants have? My girl's wicked smart. Right, because they're only growing one baby at yeah. a time. Mm-hmm. There are some things that don't quite correlate, I guess. Cows don't really correlate. It's also but... very hard to unsee uh, elephant titties once you've seen them. I saw some monkey titties the other day on TikTok and it was like very pornographic. Yeah. <laughs> We have a buddy that uh, that stuck a finger in a kangaroo pouch, and he said it's a very inappropriate feeling. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Yeah. Because kangaroos have three vaginas and two of them for sex, and one of them wears the little is the one that the little Joey comes down straight into the pouch, and the other two are for sex. Marsupials, how marsupial sex and reproduction is so crazy. That's what I didn't realize about pouches is like it's not fluffy in there. Yeah, no. it's it's actually a, it's actually a womb. It is a whole it's yeah like uterus on the outside, Ugh. and they are. Your friend is fucked up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, it's from uh, Josh Holloway. What from uh, True Crime Bullshit? Yeah, he's a he's a great podcaster. Mm. Yeah, he's inter- he did it for work. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Um, what about marsupial ones? Is that they do they all have three 
vagina? Yeah, so three vaginal tubes, but one opening. Um, and then so the sperm can go up both of the tubes. And then when their baby is ready, about 30 days later, they'll travel down the tiny tube into the little pouch to get all cozy and finish growing. They do a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of research on like how the pouch works because it's kind of like for like preemies and stuff because yeah, it's really, it's really like the uterus on the, on the outside of the body, which is just crazy. It's their whole. <laughs> and how do they feed them? Like, do, is there a putting food in the pouch for the little thing while it's growing or is it still umbilical cord, you think? I'm not quite sure. Robin, let's, let's take a look uh, at that. Yeah. Also, we might not know these. We've learned all of these facts today, me and Robin. So I'm stumped here. I love yeah. that elephants have two nipples. See, you're forever changed. Now, you know, like if you just. Yeah. Like how many babies you have? How many nipples? You know how many nipples? You, have. you should put in big elephant boobs. And- Honestly, the, that was the first thing that came up was like, can someone Photoshop a huge bra onto this elephant? Because their <laughs> boobs are huge. Yeah. Elephants are only on all fours because their tits are so big. <laughs> they have back problems. <laughs> The weirdest, I I already alluded to this one, but the weirdest um, genital thing that we read was that um, the spotted hyena has a pendulous clitoris that looks very much like a penis and a fleshy pseudoscrotum and they have no vagina, the females. So the males must inseminate the females through their narrow clitoral opening and birth is also through the clitoral opening, um, which seems very painful. Um, And more than half of the pups suffocate on their way out because it is not fun for them either. Interesting. I don't know that. It's like like putting a penis in a penis when they have sex. Speaking of, Hmm? there are hermaphrodite animals. I've also had some, I've seen lots of hermaphrodite dogs and cats. Really? Mm -hmm. Does it have any like effect on their daily lives it's a good question um is sometimes they're only only if it's like medically like the clit is like so big it like blocks their opening or something like that so rarely sometimes they have to tape it to the side like a basketball player to know like they're gonna get (laughs) yeah for for some reason i was uncomfortable when i learned that our beloved chloe has a clit i never thought of dogs as having clits they do i didn't think of that until this moment. So They're different. There, there's technically there is like up there you don't really see it. It's called a vulva instead of like a vagina. It's 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 complicated, but they've got the part. Uh-huh. You clearly told me that she has a clip. I mean, she does. Are you backtracking? They the do story? have. No, they have them. They have them. It's really interesting to me though, like that a hyena's clit would be used for birth because I feel like so often, like in the sex and orgasm conversation, like I would be like. Well, female orgasms aren't like necessary for birth or whatever. Like the clitoris like doesn't need to be there. And it's like in other animals, like it has actually been used for birth. And it's been shown that that is not really comfortable for anybody. So it's nice that like we developed like a birthing canal that now seems way more accommodating. And then the clit is just for fun. Like I love that for us. And I'm sorry, hyenas. Yeah, I'm sorry, hyenas. Yeah, it's a raw deal. <laughs> it's a raw deal, like a, a dog's penis that has been left out too long. Very bad. <laughs> How long is their clit out of commission after they have a, a litter of pups? I have no idea. Everybody needs some recovery time for, I mean, like I said, dogs can only get pregnant twice a year. So if they're anything like dogs, they would ovulate twice a year, but I don't know. They were going through heat cycle twice a year. I mean, I think they're most closely related to dogs, but that is very Mm -hmm. interesting, different anatomy than dogs. I found the duck penis thing. Okay. Duck penises are twisted like corkscrews and they grow anew each year. What? A new penis? (laughs) You get a penis. You get a penis. How exciting. Um, Duck vaginas corkscrew in the opposite direction. Oh, cute. Uh, cute. Well, you know the reason behind that, though? So that they can It go- says the twisted organs are a classic case of an evolutionary battle of the sexes. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Not a happy ending, this story. Uh, oh. 
not cute. Yeah, <laughs> it's because male ducks are so rich that the that the females <laughs> developed a corkscrew like you know, reproductive system first, and it has uh, it has like wrong turns in it and shit. So that the so that the the male will stop when it thinks it's all the way in, when it's actually a fake out. Oh yeah, they're called dead end pockets. Yeah, a physical barrier against forced mating by randy males. Randy forced. Yeah. Say what it is. Dude, Randy yeah, is yeah, up there say with. What it is. Yeah, Randy's up there with Hansy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, that's not what that's called, dude. Yeah. When a female is receptive to a male's advances, however, her vagina relaxes, allowing access to her labyrinth reproductive tract and a greater chance of fertilizing her eggs. There you go. That's why those gay cops didn't have any problem getting it in. There's no dead eggs. Poppers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're learning so much. Back to kangaroos, though. The joeys do eat uh, they, their nipples inside the pouches, so they go down there and then they suckle for the rest of their gestation, and then... They, that's also when they return to the pouch after they've been born. They go in their nipples and kangaroos food. have boobs in their vagina <laughs> in their uterus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and their vagina. So I mean, they're basically just covering their tits up with the pouch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most of them. Yeah. yeah, it's better for boxing. You know, titties get in the way <laughs> for sure of athletic activities. <laughs> Don't want to get tit punched. If you've ever seen that video of the guy like punching the kangaroo in the face, literally the best thing oh. that the ever did. I disagree. I it was like to save video. a dog. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe. I got pissed at that video this week of the woman saving her dogs from the bear, and she like pushed the bear off the wall, and I was like, "Don't push her." Easy video. She was seventeen. That girl. No way. Don't push her. <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> Don't push her. Give her your seat on the subway. She has two children. <laughs> what else do we have oh the argentine blue-billed duck um he's 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 got a huge penis to body uh ratio what are we talking uh his penis can stretch to be as long as his body oh can stretch can does he have control over it I don't know. Or is it like he's the Stretch Armstrong of the animal kingdom? Like somebody else needs to stretch him? <laughs> Not enough. <sighs> we all know the ones with, who's got big dicks. Walruses have big dicks. We said elephants have big dicks. Silverback um, does not. The silverback gorilla does not? It's like a hockey puck. And is that comes down to the um, competitive nature of their sex. Like Explain. A, 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 hold on, hold on. I've got it in here. I've got it in here. Chimps have the biggest dicks of the monkey family. Um, okay. One, yeah, one of the things is that female chimps contact another female chimp and then embrace her before rubbing their genitals together. That's what female chimps like to do. Gay. <laughs> Scissoring happening in the wild. Love to see it. So it says that uh, gorillas have... Tiny penises measuring in at just one and a half inches when erect. Um, and they usually are on average 485 pounds themselves. A feminist podcast, but can we not shame them with the term tiny? We didn't say they're bad. We just said they're small. I heard tiny dick. Go ahead. Okay. Tiny it's dick. because primate mating practices are a huge factor in the evolution of the male's genitalia. So when they have to compete around... Other males, like the bonobos, they will have a bigger penis, but when they're not competing, then they no reproductive competition equals small penis. Wait, so because they've had no competition, their dicks have just become smaller? So the females are, are all monogamous in the silverback community. They're not, once they've got a mate, they're, they've, they're monogamous to that mate. They're not going out with heaps of other men so the male silverback gorillas aren't trying to fight with all the men for the one female attention once they're there they're there so so, the, so she's happy with the one and a half she's just into him she likes him for more than his dick I, she must we know that people compete for people but do <laughs> animals get fisticuffs like when peacocks and 
peacocks with brightly coloured feathers and lions with majestic manes, they are using them to compete for females' attention by doing like big flashy displays. They're competing by being sexy, but then there's also animals that like get into like full fights. Like there's mooses that like lock each other's like horns and like kill each other just to get fucked. I mean, freaking llamas like cut each other's or rip each other's testicles off. <laughs> they do? Yeah. Love this fact. Yeah. Yeah, they they have they have, they have a like a third row that they call fighting teeth and they sneak up on each other and <laughs> Like they bite each other's balls. They're like, you're not just not going to get her. You're never going to reproduce. Yeah. Yeah. How do you ever relax? Llamas are intense. If you know that's the game. That's like being around the jackass guys, but like constantly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, if you've ever been around like the ball slapper guy, it's not fun. But like the, the guy that's going to eat your balls. Pigs also have corkscrew penises and will fear jizz. And what? And what? Fear jizz. So if you walk in oh, and yeah. like they get nervous and they think you're going to do something to them, they just, and it goes like all over the place. <laughs> they just come everywhere. <laughs> yeah. From fright. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fright. yeah. What and then they have a corkscrew. So yeah, I have a friend who is an alpaca vet. And by the way, alpacas will just lay down when they're ready for it. The females, oh, they, just, yeah. they just drop to the ground. That's how they... That's how you know that they're ready for it. And there's this <laughs> alpaca. We went to actually go help her at the farm one day. And her dad is like her assistant. And there's this one alpaca who I guess is obsessed with her dad and basically just drops to the ground every time she sees. Oh, my God. She drops it so low for him. Like they can't move hot. her. Like they have to like really push her. She's the original starfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just like picks up. She just senses the testosterone and just drops it. Yeah, she loves him. I wonder how starfishes have sex. I bet it's not on top of each other laying flat. They probably just like blast jizz into the water. Yes, like that, yeah. Yeah. But a lot of fish are also hermaphrodites too. Some fish will make, I think snails too, just will, they can make them their own babies. Word? I'm pretty sure. Hermaphrodites can impregnate themselves sometimes? Only some, not all the time. I'm pretty sure cool. snails are one of them. That's I'm pretty sure snails are too because I used to have snails and oh. that was one of the things that <laughs> yeah, that we learned. Do you remember your first time coming? I don't remember. I mean, I grew up in a particularly horny household. So I think Did you? It was always, it was always my, my brother had Playboys everywhere. He had the box that we were the scrambler. So we'd have the Playboy station. So like That's big. I just was I was just humping everything and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone in this house, I guess was, and I was not an exception. So that's, I so I don't, I don't remember like there was no special, maybe t I think around 10, I started to get kind of horny 10, 10, 11, probably around 10, 11, 12. But that means you can get off like fairly easily from humping. Pretty good at humping like from humping in general. Yeah. But not in general. Yeah. Is direct contact tougher? Sex is tougher. Like sex is tougher. It's tougher. Yeah. Like it, I've got to be humping something. Mm -hmm. Or humping first and then sex. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still, it's still just hard with something in there. So it's hard. And I still like it, but it's hard. I, but I feel like penetration actually inhibits me. I, I agree. I, it actually inhibits. So, oh, good. Oh, thank you. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, we had somebody on our Discord this week or maybe last week be like, yeah, I can only have orgasms when my legs are crossed and it's really hard for me to like get penetrated and have an orgasm because of that. Cause like you can't cross your legs when something's like in you. And I was like, yeah, like that's like, I need my legs crossed. And I like, I don't think I, I very rarely come like yeah. while something's in me. Right. Right. It, it has to be, it's very rare. But as long as you're getting off at some point. But butt stuff. <laughs> but butt stuff. Way to go, Dr. Lisa, putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's different because it's not in me. It's that's if I'm on top. It's <laughs> for the record in you. Yeah. Uh, but not in the badge. <laughs> yeah. Not, mm -hmm. not yeah. I was like in, <laughs> not in the badge. Just like lightly grazing the butt. No. <laughs> Does it for her? No. <laughs> I was all up in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can come from butt stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, when I'm on top, because then it's like direct contact. Yeah. Humping. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm humping. Oh, smart. Yeah, Cheat so. code. Yeah. Right. It has to be. You guys. 
it had the it's controlled, but pretty much that's it. And I and I only discovered that with him. So <laughs> go Richie. Yeah. yeah, it's oh, nice to do I, butt stuff on the top because then you control it too. Imagine though if I was like, yeah, exactly right. I just control everything. But um, but imagine if I was like, oh, I've known that since I was six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 20. I did it with a paper towel holder. <laughs> yeah. The banister. Yeah. There's probably you nothing I wouldn't it. hump though when I was younger. I think I needed to get like stars in my book to stop humping things. <laughs> <laughs> like the floor, like the chair, like armchairs, it like did. chairs of arms. It, it took I mean. stickers. Yeah. You got didn't hump today a stickers. Lot of stickers. That's yeah. So you got a sticker for doing your piano lesson and then a sticker for not humping today. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> carrot or the stick, I guess. Yeah. Uh, like an animal, like a <laughs> like a horse. Okay. Um Richie, what was your first time coming like? Do you remember that? Uh yes, absolutely. Didn't know I was coming. Mm-hmm. Um never I've I've realized I've never told this story. And uh <laughs> It involves a jacuzzi and okay. a cousin. What? It was a guy cousin. Uh, <laughs> so, Shout out to the bonobos. I, I think I was 12-ish. Like young, but I, I was also like a crazy late bloomer, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents had this like big hot tub and we were both, we were both in it like watching TV and then somehow one of us like threw a leg over the side of it and put their dick in the jet and was like, you've got to try this and <laughs> did. And it was like, holy shit. And uh, it was like an endurance contest of like, it, but, but both of them, yeah. like, holy shit, that feels amazing. Uh, just like keeping it in the jet, but like didn't know what it was. And then mm-hmm. took a shower and put on PJs. And I remember the PJs like being getting caught on a lot of stuff because I was uh. Uh, covered in my cousin's <laughs> cum. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. even going to try to guess what cousin. I know which cousin. I don't think you know him. Okay, thank God. Yeah, we don't talk much for some reason. Uh, uh. We've definitely... <laughs> <laughs> we've definitely never talked about it. <laughs> but yeah. Like were you but were you guys both like just busting in the hot tub? For sure. We're both just coming into the jet jet stream. Yeah, that's why you guys don't talk anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's definitely a thing that like we both were- But also you neither of you knew it was sexual. Like you were having like like it was like boys doing sports being like I can do this and I can like not like I I can I can hold out this long. Can you? Doing it no matter how crazy it feels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, and I didn't know what it was until like a long time later that it was like, there would be like some, you know, that I'd come on my stomach or something and then like wash it off, but not really. And then put a shirt on and feel how it like pulled. And it was like, oh yeah, that was everywhere. Do you remember when you first masturbated intentionally? Uh, yeah, it was with my cousin. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think I was a freshman in in high school. Okay. Freshman in high school, dad's playboy, Jessica Hahn issue. And and like you'd probably had a health class by then to be like. I went to Catholic. Jacking off. Oh. He's so messed up. Yeah, that's why I fucked my cousin. That is why. Uh, <laughs> you didn't fuck your cousin. I mean, we had a threesome with an adamant object. With a tub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty weird. Now that I said it, I'm, I'm very glad that that questionnaire asked the question because it's like, yeah, that's, that's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. No, th- th- you're not the only one. Your when parents, it works. Your parents yeah. are coming downstairs as yeah. we speak. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you guys, this has been so much fun. I could keep you for days, but Richie or Lisa's parents are coming down the stairs. Where can everybody find you guys online? Richie, go first. At Richie Redding, and you can find my album, number one album of the year, on anywhere that you listen to albums. 
Yay. Dr. Lisa Littman, where can we find you? Just at Dr. Lisa Littman everywhere. D-R-L-I-S-A-L-I-double-P is in Peter, M-A-N. And the podcast is We Don't Deserve Dogs. We Don't Deserve Dogs. That's right. Yeah, which we're we're on the great. But they deserve their clits. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 (laughs) Um, You guys, I have to ask everybody this after a sexual experience, which this has been. Um, Richie Redding, Dr. Lisa Lippman, did you finish? Oh, yes. Uh, Yeah. Yes, in the intellectual and physical and mental and and all the senses. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell because my clothes are sticking to me. So, yeah. (laughs) Amazing. Um, Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for having us. Of course. Um, And we will see you guys next time on How Come. Goodbye. Bye, Bye, guys. Thank you. (laughs) It's not you, it's me. I try so hard to finish honestly. They say you'll know when you go all the way from A right down to O. Oh no, I think that I still got a ways to go. Oh, oh. I'm sick of this and I have got to know. How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can do it by myself. I wanna jizz. That was fun. That was also, great. you guys, we have we have more um stats, I think. There are, I have so much animal sex. Like, yeah. Do you want to do you want to do animals are kinkier than you? Just the two of us. We can. First of all, there is an Australian marsupial, a little mouse like guy that will go at it. By the time they had 11 months, they've produced all the sperm that they can. And then they'll go at it for 14 up to 14 hours at a time with one female before moving on to another until their body breaks down and they die. They literally have sex to the death. Icons. Until their fur falls out and they bleed internally and they die. Icons only. What the fuck? I love bloody Aussies. (laughs) Okay, kinky animals. And it's a cute little animal. (laughs) Cute little babies. Um, Okay. Animals are kinkier than you. A sip of giraffe urine. What? The bull, which is what you call a male giraffe, visits various herds looking for a female called a cow. He gets right to the point by leaning over and gently nuzzling her rear end. The goal? To catch a sip of her urine. The idea is that he can detect various chemicals in her urine that indicate whether she's prepared to mate. Or he likes the taste of piss. (laughs) You're just out in the wild and the giraffe's just like taking a sip of... With their weird blue tongues. (laughs) Oh, I love it. It's great. Kinky. Um, Next, hippos flying feces. Hippos are more into dung than urine. For a species that can be quite aggressive, it is perhaps not all that surprising that they spend a good deal of time marking their territories. They do that by leaving very large piles of dung on the banks of rivers and and ponds they swim in. As they deposit their excrement, they use their tiny tails as tennis rackets, shooing bits of poo in every direction. (laughs) It is called dung showering. If a female hippo is interested, she turns around, raises her ear out of the water, and presents him with a dung shower of her own. Um, Researchers refer to this sort of mating ritual as submissive defecation. How cute is that? Imagine getting showered in someone's shit and being like, oh my God, (laughs) same. (laughs) <laughs> so funny I love it. garter snakes massive mating balls this reminds me of the one episode where you were like in middle school we would just go together go go to people's houses get into a pile and just like feel around that's what yep. i'm imagining these snakes and their massive mating balls look like just yeah around. Oh, so it's a mating ball. It's not like mating yeah. balls. No, no, okay. no. The females release the pheromones that indicates their presence and that they're ready to mate. And it's like right after they've been hibernating. So the males come up and they just get into a massive mating Tens ball. Tens of thousands of individuals get together and wiggle around in massive writhing mating balls. The balls are created after the females release a pheromone that indicates their presence. 
And then inside the mating ball is a group of males who are pretending to be female. What? Yeah. So they don't actually know 100% why they do that, but they think it's either to avoid aggression from other males um, because they want to trick other males into wasting their sperm so that they're the only ones that get the females pregnant or that they, they just stay until the post game. Like yeah. they're at the party and then they're like, just watch everybody else like sling their like bad come up, like uh, come on lines and then like leave. And then like they're there and they're just like, I guess it's just us. You and me now. Yeah. Let's wiggle. <laughs> So they have, yeah, made major mating balls. Imagine seeing tens of thousands of. Oh, I, I love a mating ball. We have, oh my gosh, the red velvet mite sperm garden. This is insane. So the male red velvet mite constructs a sperm garden from plant parts using his own sperm as the glue. What's and a red velvet mite? It's just like a little tiny termite. Dust yeah. mite? Yeah, little little dude. Um, and then lays down a silk road leading to the entrance of his garden for the females to come. And he sits and waits in his little house that he's made. And then if she likes what she sees, she comes into his house and then she sits herself down on top of a package of his sperm and the, all the nutrients that she may need. And then that's how she gets pregnant. She sits on his sperm. But... Other red velvet male mite bully guys will come and they'll destroy the house and they'll put their sperm on top so that the chick comes in and she's like, oh, my God, this is such a nice house that someone's made and then gets pregnant with the bully sperm while the no. other guys oh, being like how nice guy. they leaving the oh. cuckolded arachnid to weep with sorrow. No. See, so he builds a house and then some other dude just jacks off on his walls. Do you know what sucks about Darwinism is like sometimes survival of the fittest is like survival of the biggest asshole. And like, we see that in our own society as well as you know. And then these are going to be like leaders of companies and countries and shit just because these fucking asshole termites are just going to keep breeding more asshole termites. It's like ducks. Fully Shit. making duck vaginas change shape because they're such dicks. Mm -hmm. Okay, but do you want to hear how kinky dolphins are? Yeah. Dolphins enjoy masturbation and they masturbate by wrapping eels around their penises and getting off on the electric shock. Plug in your vibrators, you guys. Yeah, charge, charge your chores. Yeah. <laughs> now, for one more final sex fact, or maybe two. Beer bottle guy. Yeah, we didn't yeah. talk about that. We didn't get okay, to that. two more things. Two more things. Okay, should we start okay. with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, the so in North Atlantic right whales, the males compete for reproduction by trying to prevent others from mating but their sperm at the end of the day is the one that is competing. So the female will mate with several of the males in her little pod. And when she's ready to have sex, she'll just roll over and swim upside down to the surface. And the male will roll onto his side to allow his prehensile penis, like an elephant's, better access to the vagina. It'll last about two minutes before he has to roll over to breathe. Um, and then it's quite common for another whale to come in and join and then to have threesomes and the female nice. will have both dicks at the same time DP. until they need to, the male needs to take a breath again for another like 40 and roll, seconds. And roll back over to breathe. <laughs> it's very, very similar. Okay, but final fact. <laughs> the the prested beetles. Mate. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite. So uh, perhaps one of the most common ways in which humans try to spice things up in the bedroom is through the use of sex toys. Um, in 1983, some Australian zoologists noticed that there were a lot of male beetles attempting to mate with beer bottles. Um, As most males do. 
And they realise that it's because the four wings of the females that the males should be mating with are the same brown hue and as the beer bottles. Um, and they have a very similar texture of the glass as well. And so the males are now so attracted to the bottles that they prefer having sex with them over the females. And as a result, the species is rapidly on its way to extinction because the guys just want to fuck bottles, not wow. females. So rip to them. I hope the bottles were worth it. And also, that's not all. Ants have learned to congregate near discarded beer bottles, waiting for a lonely beetle to try his luck. Then they can quickly attack, overpower, and gobble him up. Another reason why they're going extinct. So yeah. they're just a really smart species. They're just survival of the fittest. And these guys are not so fit. <laughs> they're really not. Fuck beer, get murdered. <laughs> Oh. Um, Great. I, I'm so glad we did this episode. <laughs> it was insane. I've done a lot of researching. I know too much about animal sex. You really um, have. Interesting stuff. But yeah, we got it. So if you ever think your sex life is weird, Google animal sex. animals. Yeah. Also, I like knowing that pandas are like kind of asexual or demisexual. Yeah, they just it, it it just makes like things like I don't know. I feel like we always talk about like what's natural or whatever, and it's like there are so many things that are quote unquote natural, and it doesn't necessarily mean that. Like that's the other thing I was going to say about sheep and their homosexuality that it is natural. They reckon that it is a hardwired behavior in their hypothalamus rather than a learned behavior. So these sheep are like gay in their brain it's not because they're seeing other guys fucking like it that is natural too this was great we love it all right bye